Hey everyone, welcome to Kim Yin Yoga. I'm Kim. And this is Sin. And today we have a practice for gardeners. So here's the yoga I like to do after a full-on garden session. We are starting out on all fours. If your wrists are sore, I want you to keep tenting. Oops, I bumped the kitty. Wait, oh, okay. <laughs> this is Sin, everyone. S I double N for the Sumerian moon god. One of the only male moon gods there are. We're going to start on all fours, like Kit Kat, and do this circular cat cow. So, right back into a good foot stretch, and then I'm rolling forward. <laughs> Rocking back, tense your fingers if your wrists are at all sore. We are waking up the spine, we're waking up the shoulders, upper back body, lower back body, hips, knees, calves, feet, and toes. We're waking everything up. Reverse the circle, around we go. I love these. All right, come back to center. We're tucking our feet under. We're just going to do a little ankle stretch. So, some of you may only be able to sit like this if you're kind of just starting. Uh, but it'll get better. The more you do it, the more it'll get better. We're in a hero's pose. I'm coming straight back. And I'm lifting my knees. Stretching the <laughs> tops of the ankles, tops of the feet. It's beautiful. And then I'm rocking forward, stretching out the arms, keeping my pinkies, no, fingers, the longest digits on the mat. Rock it back for one more. So I'm almost like in a Vishnu's couch, only with my feet tucked under me. And forward for the stretch. Let's do one more. Deep breath in. Stretch it out. If you've reached your maximum in hero's pose, that's fine. Just do what you can. Come center. Each time you do it, you're going to get more and more and more capable. That's the beauty of yoga. Okay, from here, we usually don't use props, but if you have a tennis ball, racquetball, one of those squishy kids' tennis balls, something round like that, grab it. If not, no big deal. We're coming down onto our side. And if you've done the kind of uh, first aid for lower back pain, you've done this, but it's amazing. You're gonna charlie horse the hips and take your thumb and press it into the top of your pelvis, kind of where you feel the attachment of the glute medes, the gluteus medius. I'm bringing my knee forward, and then I'm extending, slowly extending it out behind. So there's this really strong pull back, toe down, and you feel it. It uh, burns into the butt. Do about 10 of these. 8 or 10, as you can. Nice and slow. I learned this uh, from AthleanX, Jeff Cavalier at AthleanX.com. He's a personal trainer and a physiotherapist. When you've done about eight or ten of these, nice and slow, you're going to come back to the top and I'm really pushing my thumb into the sacrum. I am pulling the leg back, pointing that toe down, and I'm holding it for about ten seconds. And what you'll find after a few seconds is the whole gluteus region begins to burn and you want that because it's that stress of those really big muscles there that's going to allow to relax and let go which is what you need to do because a lot of back pain can be from guarding we don't need to guard anymore deep breath in and release it down we're going to flip over i'll uh, roll over this way and we do the other side don't worry we will get to the tennis ball you know so same thing on the other side i'm in this Cleopatra pose, and I'm Charlie Horse in the hips, I'm clamping down, bring my knee forward, and pulling the leg back, right behind, I'm going behind the medium, the middle line, pointing the toe down, and 
if you experience a sore back, you're going to find tremendous relief in doing this even daily. Okay, eight or ten of those, and I'm just pulling the leg back, toe down, uh, the pelvis is kind of tilting forward, and I'm pushing in, <laughs> something just popped, pushing into the sacrum, the back of the pelvis there, deep breaths, and you stay for however long it takes to get that burn into your butt. The more you do this, the longer it'll take. And then stay a little longer, <laughs> holding it. Deep breath in. And exhale it out. All right. This is where the tennis ball comes into play. Roll over onto your back. And my tennis ball is a little far away. <laughs> And we'll plant the knees, flat back, here we go. Use your elbows to lift up, get your shoulder blades settled. I'm gonna shoot my left leg down long, and I'm going into a reclined tree. So that means the bottom of my right foot is pressing into my left thigh. So here I am in this reclined tree pose, but not fully yet. I'm taking the tennis ball, I'm rolling everything over, and you can probably see, you might be able to see where I'm going to place this. It's at the back, not center of the sacrum, but off to the side of the sacrum. I'm going deep into where those attachments of the top of the pelvis are. And when you first do this, it might be like, wowza, <laughs> that's a sensation. So find where you get a strong sensation, but not something that's just uh, really hurting. And you might uh, even grab your knee and roll it around and get this incredible uh, acupuncture <laughs> pressure into the back of the pelvis. Find your spot. I like to mimic the tree pose with the palms up to the ceiling in receiving and just three long slow deep breaths here and let everything go let go of the shoulders the upper back body let go of the spine the butt the thighs let go of your fingers and toes the skin of your face Ah, sigh it out. All right. To test how amazing this is, bring your right leg up. Remove the tennis ball. Allow, allow for that tree pose again. And feel the difference. You're going to be able to relax into it more and more every time you do this. Okay, let's not let, neglect the other side. <laughs> Keep things even. So left leg up, I'm rolling over, finding that spot. Each side is different. <laughs> oh, this one's really intense for me, but I am going for that edge. In yin yoga, we seek the edge, uh, area where there is very strong sensation, but not stabbing, cutting, bruising, burning, pain, but strong sensation. Here we go with our three deep breaths. Relaxing the face, the neck, the shoulders. Relax the spine, the pelvis, the thighs. Relax the feet and hands. And exhale it out with a sigh. Oh. Okay, again, lift your left knee, remove our prop tennis ball and back for a moment into recline tree, feel the difference. You may find you settle into this most beautiful recline tree at a distinctively higher level than when we first attempted. All right, we're coming back up to center. <clears throat> 
and I'm flipping it over into a beautiful stretch of the upper back body. So I'm rocking back first to get a lovely foot stretch, pranam, forehead to the mat, tent the fingers and crawl them forward as far as you can, then drag them back, stretching the toes, stretching the fingers. Deep breath in. And exhale it out. I come up onto all fours. I'm going to plant my right palm, starfish style, in the center of the mat. And I'm coming up with my left hand, swinging it under to create this beautiful threaded child's pose. So my left hand is out underneath my body. I'm getting a beautiful sensation in the shoulder, the upper back body. And you can do more with this by raising your right hand and bringing it right around in a bind. You don't have to do this, but if you want to go for the bind, grab your left thigh with your right hand and tip your nose to the ceiling. This gives me an added sensation from the upper spine, mid thoracic, and down into the lumbar region. Deep breaths here. And relax. Let your bones hold you up. And let the muscles relax. One more long, slow, deep breath in. And I'm going to exhale it out. I like to take my fingertips to my shoulder, point my elbow skyward, let the blood kind of come back in as I come back up to do the other side. And the other side becomes the counter pose. So left hand a little bit to the center of the mat, right hand comes up. And I'm diving it through. I might have to inch that forward a little. Diving it through. And here I'm finding this beautiful threaded child. If I want to get some more out of it, I'm going to lift my right hand up and around into a bind. And I like to tip my nose to the ceiling. You might, if you want more stability, square up that uh, right hand and I can actually use that as leverage to augment the twist. So you decide the level of intensity you want to experience in this pose. Deep breath in. This is most amazing if you do a lot of shoveling hoeing, pickaxing, picks pickaxing, <laughs> that's not a verb, <laughs> working with the pickaxe. Uh, <laughs> anything that's going to put an added intensity to the spine, this is incredible. If you start to feel your fingers tingling in the bind, which I'm doing right now, you can come back to that uh, fingers on the shoulder, you can lift the hand up, you get a beautiful drainage. If the neck feels uh, challenged, bring it back to level and maybe tuck the chin just slightly and you'll get full relief in the neck. And one more deep breath in here. And exhale it out. I'm coming back down planting my hands and I'm going, we're going to do some uh, dragon poses. So again, rocking back, stretching the feet, tenting the fingers, stretching through the fingertips, stretching through the toes, really 
getting some intensity there right back into the trapezius muscle that's pulling the scapulas together and up we come into downward facing dog so i'm coming up into my dog up on my tippy toes keep a slight bend in the knee <clears throat> i am pointing my toes a little bit intending them together to get an internal rotation of the hips Hands are doing the opposite, rotating the other way to flatten the scapula over my back. I'm going to put my left foot a little inward towards the middle of the mat, and I'm lifting up my right leg, and I'm going to bring it right up into a beautiful little runner's lunge, sliding the left foot back as if I was in a uh, pigeon, we did this yesterday with the pigeon uh, video. And from here, I'm going to continue that sensation of upper body stretch, flattening my left hand down and lifting the right arm up. And I might even go ahead and bring it around in this feeling of bind. And I'm twisting trying to get my eyes all the way back around to front. Deep breath in here. Exhale it out, and I come back. Let's just do one lizard. So inch the right foot out. I'm splaying it out a bit. And come on down to your elbows. So it's almost like in a sphinx pose. Yours will uh, be unique for you. But I'm wanting to get that kind of feeling of sphinx with this beautiful stretch in the pelvis. Deep breath in here. And exhale it out. Let's go ahead and do one more foot stretch pranam back here. Remember, walk those fingertips out, plant them, claw the fingertips down, press them into the mat, and draw them back. Big old stretch. Okay, let's do the other side. Back up into our downward facing dog. And inching my right foot to the middle, I'm coming up and I'm bringing myself into a runner's lunge, pushing my right leg back this time to the degree that feels right for you, planting right arm down, and up I come into this beautiful side body, and I'm wrapping my, you don't have to do the bind, but I'm wrapping my hand around. Deep breath in, exhale out, back up, and from here, out comes the Explain the left foot out, and I'm just coming down into this dragon sneaks. Come down as far as you can. It's a lizard dragon. It's definitely a reptilian pose. <laughs> I'm pulling them out apart, uh, metaphorically, with my palms. So I've got full intention in my triceps, in my forearms, in my fingertips. Deep breath in, exhaling it out, up I come, and I'm walking it back to another, you guessed it, pranam foot stretch, clawing through the fingertips. We're doing this for our feet and our wrists. <laughs> okay, pop on up and flip over. We're going into a little wonderful pose of, of sleeping possum. And from here, the possum doesn't get to uh, sleep very much because uh, we are going to do, so this is legs up the imaginary wall, knees a little bit bent, so we've got the flat of the back yeah, resting beautifully into the mat. And from here, we are going to do the cat making bread. So I reach, claw, pull, reach, claw, pull. My fingers are mimicking the feet or other way around, whichever 
seems more accessible. So wide yogi toes, reach, claw, pull, really exaggerate it and scratch up that. It's almost an aggressive bread making. When cats make bread, they're so calm and they're purring and it's all very relaxed, but I want you to just really get into this. So we are point, 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 activating those wrists and then let it all relax. So zombie possum, zombie arms, relaxed feet, deep breath in. Exhale, exhale it out. Bring the knees down. We'll do one bound hedgehog, one top chia. My knees are bent. You can do this out here by pressing, depending on how your what your body wants, or you can tuck the knees into your elbow creases, clasp your wrists, and deep breath in. Exhale it out. I am doing an isometric, pushing my knees into my elbow creases, elbow creases holding in, and I'm feeling my pelvis, sits bones spreading left to right. I am feeling the flat of my back flush against the mat. Another deep breath in. And exhale it out. All right. We might want to do a couple little circular motions here to really relax and surrender the spine, which should be feeling pretty amazing by now. <laughs> and we've got one more posture. And you decide to what degree you want to do this. We're doing a reclined twist. I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, twisted root because it's gardening. <laughs> which just means we are crossing the legs, crossing the ankles, and then just rolling beautifully over to the side. I'm putting my arm up here for support, uh, the kind of cactus arms, and twisting the other way. But stay here if, if you want to do twisted root and you're into it, you just stay right there. Your alternative is just a very simple knees together with hands on the tops of your knees and over like that. So you decide which version you want to do. I think you could do a single twist as well. Just one twist. So this guy's come up a little bit. You decide. <laughs> Three deep breaths here. I'm going to go back into my twisted root because I like it so much. Okay. And down it goes. And one more long, slow, deep breath in. And we are going to go twisted root on the other side. Whichever twist you did, going that way, you want to repeat on the uh, other side tuck my hips over this way. So over I go into my twisted root on the left side. Deep breaths in. If you are in a simple uh, recline twist, so if your knees are just stacked and over, a really cool thing you can do to open up the pelvis is to put the left hand on top of the right knee and then push the knee up as if you're doing clamshell but you don't let it up and you have that intention in there immediately <clears throat> you're going to feel a relief in the lower back so you try that if you like Good. and we'll do three more long slow deep breaths here As I exhale out the third breath, we come onto a beautiful stretch, a full body stretch, and I'm arching the back, flattening the back. 
Deep breath in, arching the back, and as I exhale, Wiggalasana. <laughs> it's a Shavasana with a shimmy. So I'm laying in Shavasana, and my hips are the epicenter. They're gyrating, gyrating, <laughs> gyrating left to right, wiggling it out. My feet are fishtailing. It's effortless. It's allowing. My whole body is getting a shimmy, a shake. This is incredible for the spine. Deep breath in, keep wiggling. And then exhale it out in stillness, Shavasana. You can stay here in Shavasana for as long as you like. One of the most important poses of your practice. Give yourself a few deep breaths. I'm going to come up to seated so I can acknowledge you all. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching through to the end of the film. It's one of the best things you can do to support a YouTube channel. Click the like up, the like up, <laughs> like the thumbs up button, subscribe, happy gardening.